All right, Shalom. Uh, honest to the apostles and elders, great millstone who rule teach well. Much peace, love, and salutation to the brothers doing this work of truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is a brother Batop back again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing be edifying. This is the book of First Kings, chapter 8, verse 28. It says, Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Yahweh, my power to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today now this is the words of king solomon uh which is how which we believe through faith is how we shine the spirit um so we believe that King Solomon was Yahusha in the spirit because if you go to the New Scripture, New Testament, it tells you that he was the son of David and the son of Abraham, which um the son of David is who? King Solomon. And if you also another reason to prove that King Solomon is Yahusha, all you have to do is go to the book of Psalms and read the seventy second Psalm. Um I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Psalms chapter seventy two. It's a prayer that King David said made for his son, which is, you know, King Solomon. And if you read the um the passage before the scriptures, I mean before the actual verse, it says, David praying for Solomon, sheweth the glory of his kingdom in type and in truth of the anointed Hamashiachs. So right there lets you know that's an alignment. That there is some type of similarity between King Solomon and the anointed, which is Yahweh Shah. You know? It says, David praying for Solomon, sheweth the glory of his kingdom in type and in truth of Hamashiach. Why? Because they, they're the same person. It's the same spirit. Yahweh Shah was King Solomon. It says, a, a psalm for Solomon. Now, I'm going to read a couple verses. Um, Give me one second. It says something that he's going to reign forever. He's going to judge the poor. I can really read this whole psalm, but I'm not trying to get in. Uh, read the whole thing. But if the spirit compels me, I will read, read you know, the, the key points. I'm going to start at 1. Psalm 72 and 1. It says, give the, give the, give, you know what? Yeah, I'm, it says, give the the king thy judgments, O power, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to his, to the people and the, he, the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. And Yahweh is the one that fits that description. He's the one that's going to break in pieces Esau, Edom, which is the oppressor who is oppressing the nation of Israel today. He's the one that has, has the authority. The scripture says uh, he has been given all power. Matthew 28 and 18 it says, And Yahweh came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now let's go to the um the Greek for that word uh 28 and 28 and 18. For that word power. Exousia. Okay. That word exousia means power of choice, liberty of doing as one pleases. Um, it says leave physical and mental power, the ability or or strength with which one is endued, which he either possesses or exercises. And that's exactly what Yahweh has. He has power to do what he pleases, man. You know, it says the power of authority in parentheses it says influence. And that's what he's going to he's going to push his influence, which is what righteousness throughout the earth. Once he returns in this in the last days, man. It says, and of right privilege, the power of rule, and that's what has been given to him. Everything has been given to his son, to the son, man. It says, or government, the power of him who will and 
commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed. Right, that's dominance. You know, Yahweh Shah is gonna be that that you know that person that 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 man that everybody must respect and um follow orders. Let me pull a quick precept. Uh, Luke 19 and 27. Luke 19, chapter 19, verse 27. It says, this is words of Yahweh Shah. It says, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So Yahweh Shah has the power to put anybody to death that does not obey him. You know, that doesn't follow him. That doesn't submit themselves to him. So he has that exousia, which is power to do what he as he pleases, man. Because what he's he's worthy of that. He earned that power. He went through hell to receive uh, th that power, man. To receive the kingdom. To receive that glory. And uh, and he has earned it. And. He is who we worship and who we praise, man. If you have a problem with that, then you need to check yourself, man. Because if you don't, the Lord ultimately is going to get rid of you. Okay, the word, it says university, authority over mankind. And that's what we're going to have. Because yeah, the scripture says, speak about a government that's going to be set up. That government is going to be spearheaded by yours truly. Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. He's the next ruler. Uh, real quick, precept. Because he's that next governor that's going to govern the people, nation, of, the nation of Israel and ultimately the whole world. Because it was given to him, man. That's his office. And we we have, we have love that, man. We love the fact that Yahweh Shah is going to rule this world. Because he, we know, we, um, we understand that the Lord is going to rule it in righteousness. Um, Mike, Matthew chapter 2, verse 6, it says, And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, because Yahweh Shah is a Judite. He's a so-called Negro. Uh, he's from the tribe of Judah. Art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Very plain and simple. Out of what? Judah is going to come a governor. And that governor is going uh, is Yahweh Shah. Uh, another quick precept. Real quick. Book of Sirach chapter 10, I believe. Sirach chapter 10. No, 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 no. Is it chapter 10? The power of the... Oh, here it is. Uh, uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 verse uh, 4. It says, The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set, one, set over it one that is profitable. Now that one that is profitable is referring to Yahweh Shah Mashiach, our Lord. Okay, let's continue. Authority over mankind, specifically the power of judicial decisions the of authority to manage domestic affairs and that's what we're gonna have because we're gonna have to execute the law of statute commandments in the earth okay it says a thing subject to authority or rule one who possesses authority a ruler a human magistrate a human magistrate is basically like a person that executes the law and that's exactly what Yahweh Shah and this in his elect you know the men that he had chosen his elect uh are gonna do the 144,000 men they're gonna be that next governing body of the next kingdom man Okay, uh, this says the leading and more powerful among cr created beings, superior to man, spiritual, motentis, mo 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 potentis. Okay, it says the leading and more powerful among created be beings, superior to man, and that's what Yahweh Shah is. He is the leading and more powerful among the created beings. Because why, how was that? How do you support that? How do you prove that? Because he did something that no other man could do. He was he was perfect. When he came as Yahweh Shah himself, he was perfect. He did not sin. So that makes him more superior than the rest of us, man. That's why he ought to be praised and honored and glorified, man, and worshipped. I forgot what that word, platonic. Let me see. I looked it up before. Like um, P is P O T. Okay, potent. Okay, E N T. Okay, potent. It says a ruler, lord, prince, a monarch, person who possesses independent power or sway. Right, and that's Yahweh Shah. But at the same time, he's gonna allow his his uh he's gonna 
he's going to allow his disciples, his men, to be joint heirs with him. So he's going to actually be sharing that that power with his elect, man, his, the men that he chosen to share. Okay, it says dominion, power, powerful, powerful, ca uh, able, capable. Uh, yeah, so basically, strongest form of, okay, so basically it's a, a ruler who is un unconstrained by law. So that's Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Okay, let's keep reading. The leading and more powerful among created beings, superior to man, spiritual, man, uh, potentates. So Yahweh Shah is a spiritual leader, a spiritual one that has the dominion. Okay, so when you go down here, ooh. Okay, the word exousia is the strongest definition, exousia. It says uh, from uh, Strong's G1832 in the sense of ability. Why? Because Yahweh Shah has the ability. He has that power. It says privilege, subjectively force, cap capacity, compotency, freedom, uh, master, a magistrate, superhuman. What does that mean? Going back to this definition up here. He's above us. He's superior to us, man. Okay. Uh, uh, potentate, a token of control, delegated influence, authority, jurisdiction, liberty, power, right, strength. So Yahusha is gonna be that superhuman superhuman magistrate. Let's see what the word superhuman means. Superhuman. Okay, it's divine. Ab above the powers of nature of man. And Yahusha showed that he was not from that he had that uh he had he was superhuman. It says above or beyond the human or demanding more than human power or in endurance. So he's above the human. He's above us, man. And, but ultimately, he's going to make us just like him. He's going to make us superhuman and perfect just like him. Uh, Salaki, I ain't mean, you know, yeah, it's the spirit. Uh, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 72. Let me pull up back where I had. Um, What was I at? I think I was in here. Yeah, I was in First Kings. I ain't even got to the point of the lesson yet. Okay, this is Psalm 72. I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 7. It says, In his days shall the righteous flourish in the abundance of peace so long as the moon endures. So when uh, when King Solomon, who is Yahweh Shah in the spirit, takes over, which is coming up very soon, Yahweh Shah is King, King Solomon, um, he's going to have the ability to, uh, every, it's going gonna, gonna, to be peace throughout his kingdom, man. As long as the moon endures, well, so what's that mean? Forever. It says, He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the rivers unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of, of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents, and the kings of Sheba, Sheba and, and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, all nations shall serve him. For he shall deliver the, the needy when he cries, the poor also. And him that have no helper. So, you know, this was right here just letting you know that this is referring to Yahweh Shah. I'm going to jump down to verse 17. It says, His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. So, you know, it, that description fits nobody but Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, our Lord, man. So, you know, and we believe this according to faith, you know. And it just makes sense, you know, you know, if you have the eyes to see. Well, uh, let's get back to the point. First uh, Kings chapter eight, verse twenty-nine. It says that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day. This is a prayer that King Solomon is making to the to the Lord. Okay, it says that thine eyes may be open toward the, this house at night and day, which is to talk about the temple that the Lord, how King Solomon built for the Lord. Even toward the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there, that thou mightest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray unto this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place. And then when thou hearest, forgive, if any man trespass against thy, his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath came before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and do and judge thy servants, of condemning the wicked, and bring, and bring his own way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. Verse 33, which is the point. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, 
because they have sinned against thee. And right now, do you see this? We we have been smitten down before the enemy. Who's the enemy? Esau, Edom, because what we sinned against the Lord. So we, the Lord smote us down. It says, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again unto thee. Right? What we're doing now? We're turning back to the heavenly Father. We're calling upon His name. It says, and confess thy name. Oh, that's the that's the key part about it. And pray, and that's what we're doing. We're praying to the Lord. It says, and make supplication then in in this in thy in this house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou givest unto their fathers. So if all the Israelites turn to the east and pray to the Lord for the Lord to come get us, the Lord will come get us right now, man. He will bring this place down. <laughs> you know, because that's what King. King Solomon prayed, which is Yahweh the Spirit. So, if all Israelites throughout the whole earth turned to the east and prayed to the Lord, man, we would be out of this kingdom. So that right there shows that you so-called Negroes are holding us back, man. You're holding us back from being delivered. That's why the Lord is going to get rid of the two-thirds. It says, Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people and bring them again unto their land which thou givest them to their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflicts them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants. And that's what the Lord is doing. Do Yahweh Shai. Because we, we wouldn't be able to do this with Yahweh Shai without the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. We're turning back to the Lord and we're praying before him. Huh? I'll say, okay, it says, um, it says, and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain unto the land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besieged them in the land of their cities, what happened in 70 AD? The enemy besieged us, you know? 70 AD. When Titus came and take down, took down uh, Jake, because it was a, at that time it was a it was a revolt against the uh, the Roman powers, man. So guess what? They sent their generals and they subdued the city, man. Took it over. And you had a lot of Jakes that fled into Africa. Okay, um, the western part of Africa. Uh, Okay, since if their enemy besieged them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplications soever be made by any man or by all the people Israel, right, see, by all the people, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands towards this house, which means towards the east, towards Jerusalem. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou even thy own, thou only knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee, all, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou givest unto their fathers. Moreover, concerning a, a stranger that is not of my, Uh, Salak, yeah, um, Salak, I'm doing a little bit of reading. I must jump down to verse 44. It says, If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever there thou shalt send them, and shall pray unto Yahweh toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have, I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. 
if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Right. Uh, uh, what, what is an example of that? America is an example of that. America is far. It says, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captive, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that a land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perver perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the, and in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou givest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou... Hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions with it, wherein they have transgressed again against thee. And give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. Right, and that has happened to a certain degree because you know um, we're not in hard, very hardcore bondage anymore, man. We can, you know, work and, you know, do things like, you know, we able to somewhat live our lives un un not like we used to under the hand of Esau. But it's still of oppression, oppression of society. But it's a, it's a little bit of compassion in there because of what? Because of Yahweh by Shema Shah. But Esau ain't going to have that fucking compassion. It says, for they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou bringest forth out of Egypt or Mizraim. For the mist of the furnace, from the mist of the furnace of iron, and that, and we're back in that furnace, man. It says that the eyes, that thine eyes may be opened unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for, call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among, among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, as thou speak spakest by the hands of thy Moses thy servant, when thou brought us out our fathers out of egypt O lord yahweh and if it was and it was so that when solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto yahweh he arose from before the altar of the lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven and he stood and blessed all the congregation of israel with a loud voice saying blessed be the blessed be yahweh that thou give that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised that he has not failed one word of his of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant because at the time at the time of Yahweh Shah's uh, or King Solomon's reign he reigned for 40 there was peace in Jerusalem for 40 years but that right that shows you that in the kingdom of heaven when King Solomon's reigning again there's gonna be peace <laughs> it's not gonna be any more wars Yahweh, our power be with us as he was with our father. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that we may incline our hearts unto him to walk in his ways and to keep the commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he had commanded our fathers. And let these wor these my words, wherein I have made supplication before Yahweh, be nigh unto Yahweh, our power, God, our power day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, all as the matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that Yahweh is, Yahweh is power. And that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with Yahweh our power to walk in the, his statutes and to keep his commandments at, as, at this, as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice unto Yahweh. Um, and Solomon offered sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto Yahweh twenty two and twenty thousand oxen, and as hunt and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the Israel children of Israel dedicated the house of Yahweh.
So um, an example of that is a. Uh, Then uh, John chapter 17, verse 8, it says, For I, this is words of Yahweh Shai, for I have given unto them the words which thou hast given, thou givest me, and they have received them, and have known, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are dying. So, this is nothing new. Yahweh is all has made his is always praying for the for Israelites, man. Yahweh has always been praying for the Israelites. And in the in the time that we're living in now, he's only praying for who? The elect. Because ultimately the elect are the ones that's gonna wake up and um turn back to the Lord and do all that, you know, King Solomon, which is Yahweh in the spirit, was speaking about. They're gonna turn back to the Lord and you know. You know, want redemption. Want the Lord to redeem them for the from the hands of their enemies. So, you two thirds, Jacob. <laughs> you two thirds, the name of the evil people that refuse to acknowledge Yahweh Shemal Shai and acknowledge His true name, acknowledge His word, and respect have respect for His word. All you, all you guys are uh, a part of the problem you're the reason why we're still stuck in this society because if we was to turn back to the lord and pray towards the head to the east we'll be delivered but you know jacob is the one that's holding us back you know so and only the elect are going to be able to um have access to yahweh shemel shout on this side because of the rest of israel is going to die man so with that i'm gonna close out by saying kahalayam la yahweh shemel shout by shimra kakwadash double honest the apostles and the elders of great millstone rule and teach well must peace love and salutation to the brothers when it's working truth and sincerity want to say shalom kuriyasha allah wa ba 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 